Uh, hi, um, I'm Agnieszka Mulek. Uh, my name is Hubert Sobecki. And we're writers and, I guess, story designers from MoaCube. Yeah, that's what our cards say, at least. We're not just writers, also story designers, because it sounds cooler. Way better, yeah. Yeah, so MoaCube is the, is the small indie dev team that we work for. And so what are we going to talk about uh, right now uh, are the two games that we made with MoaCube called Cinders and Solstice. And we're going to talk about uh, all the huge fuck-ups and mistakes that we did as writers and story designers. On a positive note, we are going to tell you a couple of our ideas on how to fix well, our screw-ups with diversity so that you have something positive to walk away from this, to take away from this. Because at the beginning of writing our games, we thought, like, this should be easy, right? We're indie devs, we know about diversity, we're sort of se sensitive to these problems. So, piece of cake. But the matter is, the fact is that if you don't think about it from the beginning, and if you don't design your game from the beginning to include diversity, you'll have huge problems afterwards. Uh, and the problems are not uh, necessarily game dev related. The problems are just the problems of our culture and the problems of our societies. Uh, since diversity is obvious, obviously a huge social issue, then, uh, well, you have to be aware of lots of different things and take into account the different aspects in order to really deal with it in the proper way and to really make it work in a game or any other kind of uh, content that you create, be it uh, yeah, a film or anything else. Yeah, so it's not really our fuck-ups, right, as writers. It's the society's fuck-ups. Yes, it's the society's fault. We blame the society. Let's move yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, problems with diversity. Um, um, we're going to talk about three things in general. Representation, pitfalls, and solutions. What we mean by that is representations. That's the most general category that we came up with, thinking about the problem of diversity and having diverse characters. Uh, as representation deals with people. Diversity of your cast in a computer game is actually directly linked to diversity of our societies. So it deals with how do you represent people who actually exist? How do you represent minorities? How do you represent people of color? How do you pre represent people from different ways of life and different uh, realms of experience? So that's why we use representation as the most general name for this kind of uh, um, yeah, dimension when it comes to creating characters. So this is just a, you know, uh, short outline of what you're going to hear today. Like first about representation, so what does it mean to have a diverse game, diverse cast, then our pitfalls and what to do with them. And coming back to representation. So right, <laughs> the first and most obvious thing that you can do to make your game diverse, right, is to put a character in there that is going to be different in anyway, from the others, right? So you, get, you pick a minority group or any group that is uh, usually mis misrepresented and place a character in your game that belongs to the group. So this is the cast from our f first game, Cinders. And as you see, most of the characters, almost all of them, are white, are obviously um, Caucasian, right? Yeah, and also European looking when it comes to the way they're dressed and uh, you immediately, immediately understand or I, I can have some kind of idea about the background, about the history that they represent. This is probably some kind of a late medievalish, maybe 17th, 18th century kind of a reality. It doesn't matter if it's a fantasy realm, it doesn't matter if it's a made up world, you already have some kind of cultural background that you link it to. You already have some cultural tools and skills that you use to understand what is going on, what's being presented. So uh, presence, uh, when it comes to characters, as Agnieszka said, uh, it has, it's, the, it's the simplest thing you can do. You can just place a character that is from a different group, place a character that is somehow different in any way imaginable. And, uh like, just a short note, how did this happen, right? We, we were here, we claim to know anything about diversity, and we've made this. Uh, so, 
uh, Cinders, our first game, is actually a retelling of Cinderella. So we actually patted ourselves on the back because we've added agency to our Cinder Cinderella. You can be anything you want, anyone you want. You can end up killing your stepmother, you can end up like ditching the prince and doing something completely different. Uh, so we thought that we actually uh, so we thought that we actually did something very di diverse with the game. So uh, we removed the sexist part and the damsel in distress part, right? Uh, but then again, the, the context of a fairy tale gave us this. The, usually what we imagine reading children's stories um, is a totally white cast, right? And yeah. if you have a... Uh, character of a different race of or a different orientation, they are re they really really stand out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you if you try to make something more with your characters with your diversity, then you move from presence to voice. You give you give people voice. You give them a chance not only literally to speak their minds. You give them a chance to become a, a vessel to express the uh, experience. That's the most general way to put it, I think. Uh, character with a voice is one that brings you as the player uh, closer to the world, closer to the own experience. So in the case of Cinders, in the case of our Cinderella, the main protagonist is obviously a female. She's a young woman. She's a young woman um, making some life-changing decisions. Uh, and she's also monologuing, which means she quite literally speaks her mind. Uh, she thinks constantly about her life. She has her own opinions. <clears throat> she has her own questions. So she's not only there for the sake of being, for example, in a different game, this could be the only female protagonist. So that would already give you the little tick, the gold star for diversity for presence of a female character. But then in a game about... Cinderella, uh, she's there, and obviously she's um, well. The, she's, she's the center of all things. So you get into her head, and you listen to her, and you move to the next step, which is right. experience. experience. That's the top level, I think, <laughs> of what, what you can do with a, a diverse cast of characters. Uh, like giving voice to a character is also a major thing, and it should suffice if you're creating a Back, creating background characters. The, there was a talk yesterday about retelling people's stories, so you probably have he heard everything there is to say about that already. Yeah, but then again, um, perhaps you haven't. So uh, uh, experience, that's another thing, right? That's a completely different thing. You know, not only get into some, some other person's head, but you also get to be the witness of the way of life. You also be the witness of uh, life-changing events. Of course, we make narrative games. We make games that tell stories. We make games that are character-centric. That's why we focus on people. We focus on the relationship, uh, relationships between all the characters. And uh, that's why we are so very preoccupied with all of this. However, this, on, this is not an issue that should be taken lightly, even if you're making uh, some other genre. Because, I mean, people are everywhere. <laughs> and not just people, even colorful blobs can have gender, colorful blobs can have names because people somehow associate... Attri the, the, attribute, right? Yeah, they instinctively. They instinctively humanize whatever they are interacting with in a game. But then, if you just have people... This is a, a screenshot from another, another game we made, from, from the second game we made, from Solstice. Now, this is uh, yeah, two guys kissing because that's always a good uh, piece of image to put on a presentation, any kind of presentation, actually. So uh, you get to uh, experience what it means to, I guess, fall in love and uh, what it means to uh, at least have a flick and what it means to be uh, a gay character in a fantasy world, which uh, uh, is well, at, the same time, at the same time similar and quite different from the world that we live in. But just because he's there and just because you play him as one of the protagonists, while you experience his 
perspective on what it means, what it all means. So basically, at first you have to, you know, accustom the player to the characters, make make the player like uh, the character, and then it's way harder to dismiss such events or way harder to be intolerant afterwards after experiencing something like that with a, an enjoyable character, right? Yeah, sure. And of course, I mean, uh, there are at least two strategies possible. You can either be very forceful about it and be preachy and you can uh, just uh, rub it in and you can uh, push it. Uh, or you can be very gentle and tolerant about people's intolerance and maybe... Uh, make all the, for example, same-sex uh, romantic options optional. That's what we did. It's completely optional. If you don't want it to happen, it's not going to happen. Yeah, so I think this uh, <laughs> it's a nice quotation that pretty much describes what it means, uh, what representation is all about. Uh, representation can go very, very badly. You can do it very badly. You can make lots of mistakes, but it's still better than being completely absent from from the world that is being presented. At least most of the time. Most right? of the time. When you don't reinforce stereotypes and so on. So we've already spoke about absence and the, the, uh, what we wanted to say about it is that you should watch out for it because even if you think that you do remember uh, about diversity, there are contexts that can make you um, make it slip your mind, right? So fairy tales, uh, any fantasy settings? I probably uh, I sh yeah I won't qu quote any games, but it happens. Yeah, actually, the, the first version version of this presentation was full of pictures from different games, from games you all know and some of you probably love. So then we decided to remove all of that and not to speak about all the triple A triple A games that claim to be diverse and claim to be respectful and do some very, very bad things about but basically all that. It's still a problem. Yeah, it's so we focus on our own shit and we, we're talking about our own problems. So again, about absence, well, this is again the Cinderella. This is Cinderella and her family, the two sisters, the stepmother, and that's a, a romantic interest in the middle. And uh, well, as you can see, there's someone absent from the picture, the wild, white people basically talking in a European setting. And of course, there's nothing wrong with being European and being white, but uh, maybe things would get much more interesting if you if you'd put someone else there. So we did, and we made that character completely episodic, and that's Madame Gede. And that's another problem, misrepresentation. So if you place a character that is different, is a minority or, or majority, whatever, but different from what your players expect, it is very easy to fall into another mistake, misrepresentation, make them so different and so exotic that it doesn't resemble the group you are representing at all. Uh, and even worse, it, strength, it might strengthen stereotypes, so you're actually doing something bad instead, instead of having diversity in your game. And of course, as, as, as an excuse, we can say that it's still a fairy tale. So in a fairy tale setting, having a voodoo witch is nothing bad, right? Obviously, it's something that belongs to the place. Uh, well, maybe not necessarily to your original Cinderella story. The, uh, this is actually our version of the fairy godmother, the voodoo witch. Um, so obviously, she belongs to the fantasy setting and her painted face and the way she's dressed and all of that. It sort of it fits. On the other hand, it also is very, very similar to some very colonial uh, cultural tropes that used to be quite widespread in Western culture when it comes to representation of, well, also all sorts of people of color, uh, basically, especially people from Africa, making them exotic, dangerous, possessing some, un uh, some unnatural uh, powers, at the same being closer to nature, dealing with powers, on death, of powers of death. This is a way of explaining away the difference by creating this uh, exotic uh, stereotype or stereoty uh, exotic image of a, of a witch. So basically, I, our advice would be make the character normal, whatever normal means in your game, right? But make them a character you can understand and interact with it in a normal way. Yeah, so the problem with Madame Gede was that she's not that. She only looks like uh, your 
stereotypical colonial fantasy about black person. She's not that. In the story, she's a different person. <clears throat> but then again, you need to play the game to know that. If you only watch the trailer, then you're going to see uh, just a picture of a person that is potentially offensive. Yeah, another point, hyper-representation. That's a ni nice name we coined ourselves. We put a hyphen in it because it looks more academic. So hyper-representation, this, this is a magical phenomenon. If you, <laughs> if you put a member of a minoritarian group and suddenly this, this, this one person has this magical quality of being the representation of this entire group. What I mean by that, that in, the, in a game where there are only men, for example, you get one woman and suddenly perhaps all the characters begin to react to, to her behaving, say, behavior saying things like, oh, you're a woman. This is what women do. This is what women think like. This is what women speak like. It, it goes, it's the same for all different, all imaginable groups that you can um, dissect from, the, from, the, from society. So on the picture, you have Galen, that's the main protagonist of, of Solstice, and there's Constance. And they both look, uh, what well, the look itself is already enough for people to make assumptions about who they represent. So we did have some opinions that because uh, Galen is, uh, is a gay man and because Constance looks slightly Arabic, maybe, Middle Eastern, and because of the clothes she's wearing and because of, uh, of the location that you usually, usually meet her, which is a bathhouse, which again looks, perhaps it looks a bit Oriental or Middle Eastern. Uh, all of that is already enough for people to make assumptions about them. So there's a risk that they will think that if Galen is uh, completely, it's never serious, jokes around, is obsessed about sex, and is basically this lovable chap that you love to have around. And Constance is this femme fatale kind of, uh, um, I don't know, scented beauty. <laughs> then this is what a gay man is, and this is what a, I don't know, middle, middle Eastern woman is, maybe? <laughs> In the fantasy of some Western, Western people again. She's a true femme fatale, you can see that. But uh, basically, the temptation, uh, you probably, like, you're acquainted with stereotypes, right? So this is really, hyper-representation is seriously tempting, both to writers and, both to, and to graphic designers, because it is easy to understand, it's easy to communicate. So instead of like, writing multiple lines about, to explain your character, to explain their feelings, all, all you have to do is show a woman sparsely dressed Right? And we have this idea what she's about, and we do not have to explain why she's flir flirting with everyone. It's easily understandable. So, um, basically, um, and uh, we tell you to watch out and build your characters ca carefully. Think about them before starting to write di dialogues, but also um, be careful when you work with graphics designers, because then when you explain your character, Right. Uh, normally, you would say look, people say looks are deceiving, but in games, look, looks of our characters are supposed to affect the player. So, when we explain, okay, this is the f this flirty woman who works in the bathhouse, and he, she's tempting everyone. Uh, we obviously would get a stereotype look from a gra graphics designer, and then we would get loads of hate mail about how could we create a character that looks like that and speaks like that. Uh, yeah, so basically, I mean, that, that's, that's, a, that's the thing you should, you should always be aware about. Uh, the, uh, the visuals are just as important as, as any text that you put in the... So uh, the careful advice would be to have something behind the curtain also, apart from the stereotype that you see, because everything, every character would fit in some stereotype or another. Yeah, so the key is complexity. You have to make your people complex. So again, that's a clear choice between uh, security or freedom. What does it mean even? What did we mean by this? Well, see, partially we meant that stereotypes and lack of diversity sells and is easy to understand. And you do not provoke the dialogue, so it's easier afterwards, most of the time, I suppose. 
Yeah, having, having dull characters is, uh, saves time. Because uh, if you follow cultural tropes, then people will immediately understand what you mean. They, people will immediately jump to the right conclusions. They just uh, have the right associations because all, those, all this kind of content is so widespread in our culture. So uh, it's very easy to make a stereotypical character. Yeah, but on the other hand, your game will be boring then. It will be dull as hell. That's, that's the thing about stereotypes, basically. OK, so what can go wrong when you try to avoid stereotypes and go for diversity? The first thing that you can do, which happens all the time in computer games, tokenism. Not only computer games, just Western culture. Right, so you, tokenism basically means that you get one person, usually in the movies, it's one person of color that is there not because it's necessary for the plot. It's just there to, you know, have someone of color in the in there, in the background, so that you have those, you know, box checked. Yeah, you right? have to, have again, you get the gold star of an ally because there's a black guy or there's a woman or there's a gay guy or there's somebody else or a kid with a disability, whatever strikes your fancy, but still the most, um, People tr when people do that, obviously, they try to be respectful. Or they, they can claim that they want to be respectful. In the end, they end up just, uh, well, abusing the, 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 the same group that they want to be, uh, they want to speak for, or they claim to speak for. So if you forgot about diversity, and after making a game, you think, hmm, we should have someone who is, I don't know, of color, or strong women, or whatever, a strong woman, or is gay. Just don't create a character just to show that you are you are making it diverse. Well. Just take one of the characters you already have, and you know change them, tweak them a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing, realism. Realism. That's uh, hmm, realistic. You know, whenever you hear somebody say this is completely unrealistic about anything, about a film, about a book, about a story you told, about your yeah, the story of last night, what just happened to me, this and this, this and that happened, this is unrealistic. What they mean is that somehow they have assumptions about what may happen and what may not. And obviously all worlds, uh, created or otherwise, have their own rules of what is being, of what is believable and what is not. So for example, in Cinderella, we have the fairy, and the fairy is a magical creature, and it is the... It's never really explained, but you can already get the sense of where this is going. This is a Cinderella story, there are magical powers, and this is just the way this world works. But then again, for example, uh, because it's medievalish, and in medieval times there was magic and there were fairies, so one may think that, at least. But then again, if you introduce, for example, an emancipated black woman into this picture, people will say, oh, this is completely unreal unrealistic. Medieval times and emancipated single women traveling alone and having their own job and being witches. And being witches, not being burned at, uh, at the stake. So this is unrealistic. Why is it not realistic? Why is it not realistic in this world that we're presenting? Well, again, because it requires exposition. It requires some work. It requires you to for the players to go through the hoops of learning how the, this given world works. <clears throat> and this is always subjective. So unless you explain it, not uh, necessarily directly, not necessarily in a way of a, of a codex that you need to, to read to understand the world, if you don't do it at all, people will going to object. Because, for example, they will assume that medieval times were times of universal inequality and lack of social justice, yeah. which is not really accurate, but still. Uh, but this isn't just about uh, like the setting itself. Like You can have the craziest background to your story, the craziest world, the fantasy or science fiction, and then um, make a character that sort of breaks the stereotypes if you don't explain it enough with your story or with your background, people won't believe it, despite the fact that they did believe your world, right? So we have this uh, woman in our game who took care of her 
insane husband for years. She's gentle, she is an innkeeper, so she feeds people and she's cheerful all the time. And uh, she take, takes care of people. And people had so, so strong an image of a woman who sacrifices herself for the good of her husband that then when we explained that she is actually uh, not a very nice person and she made him the way he is and she's plotting and destroying stuff, nobody would believe that, right? She is this good person, she fits the stereotype. In order to make her believable, we had to write a lot into the story. So yeah, stereotypes. Stereotypes are everywhere. Stereotypes are very useful. We need stereotypes to act quickly, and we need stereotypes to know what kind of situation that we're dealing with. Should we fight or flight? That's the basic choice we make. We make it in games as yes. well. And there is so much of them that you will fall in one or another, whether you want it or not, whether you check for it or not. Right, so we have a protagonist, a woman in the game, uh, and we wanted her not to fit fit the stereotypes, so we made her a strong woman, so she basically f has fallen into another stereotype of a woman who acts like a man. Uh, in the meantime, of course, she was drawn as an Asian to sell the idea faster, so we've fallen into yet another um, stereotype. We tried to make, make her slightly different, so we made her an asshole as well, a bit. And she has fallen to another, yet another stereotype of a... Socially strong. inept, uh, technically oriented Asian person, yes. So it was all very fine, I mean, from, from bad to worse. In the end, she is a more or less well-done character, and people do like her, and people do understand, and, uh, understand her and empathize with her, even with her assholery. It's completely understandable, simply because we spend some time to explain her background. So it makes her a fuller person, it makes her a more complex character without being reduced to just the fact of being Asian looking, being a technically oriented or analytic mind, and being not very kind when it comes to dealing uh, with, socially co with socially complex situations. Yeah, that's a tricky one. Stereotypes of cultures other than your own. That's why you need to do research, because there are so many stereotypes and you we are n never aware of even those from our own culture because they're everywhere and they're so widespread. But when it comes to other cultures, well, pff, that's a pickle. That's why you should really... Um, Research and get f feedback, I guess. The, the latter is even more important. We've had this... Um, we have this person in a game who's rude to everyone. And it's fine with players, but at some point, the character was rude to our black protagonist. And we got feedback that this is unacceptable. Yeah, but why? I mean, he's speaking this way to everyone, absolutely everyone. Yeah, but this sort of rings a bell. I can't stop seeing this Yeah, as it an was abuse, immediately right? racist because this elderly white man was speaking uh, to Galen, to the, again, to the black guy, the main protagonist of Solstice. And he was being very rude, as he always was to everyone else. But in this very context, it was clearly racist to at least one person who, who told us about it. Uh, so we had no idea. Seriously, we never thought about it. And the, the, uh, the problem about it was that this rude character was addressing Galen, talking to him as boy. He was addressing him as boy. He was, go there, boy, do that, boy. And it immediately rang the bell of a bit of a slave-like situation, maybe. So that was tricky. <laughs> Mind-blowing, but then again, a very good discovery. We changed the word. Oh, yeah, sorry, and the, the picture on the left, because we <laughs> put another one. Ah, and another game, look. There are more than two games in the world. Oh, go ahead. So yeah, uh, there's another voodoo yen, a voodoo queen from uh, the secret of Monkey Island. So uh, she's completely stereotypical. She fits the world perfectly, the world of Caribbeans and pirates and treasures. And uh, the funny thing about it, this is, I mean, it, for me, it shows perfectly how well stereotypes help you in games. Because you see a couple of pixels, brownish, reddish, goldish, greenish uh, blob sitting on a 
large chair, <laughs> and you are being told, obviously, that this is a voodoo witch. But then again, you look at the blob, and you immediately see, oh, this is the dress, and this is the strange hairdo, and this is the necklace, because you already know what to expect. So this is how stereotypes help you work, even though they're still stereotypes. Okay. Yeah, we didn't. So, <laughs> yeah. We didn't find. We didn't have the time to find the right picture. I don't think we have a positive st stereotype in the game, though. We try to avoid that. Yeah. Though probably we do have one, and we are not aware of it yet. You, you, you may point it out if you want. And, uh, so basically, positive stereotypes are, are supposed to be good, right? You present the diverse cast and like present them in a positive light, but basically. There is a large academic discussion, and we won't go into that. We are strongly against positive stereotyping uh, because they are still stereotypes, and they prevent you from seeing the person itself, right? And in the game, the character itself. So what you should do is probably strengthen and make the character more complex. Yeah, so even if you think that all women are fantastic nurturers, and even if, if you think that uh, a gay man is a woman's best friend, don't, please don't go into that because it's simply... Wrong. <laughs> yeah, another thing you can do, you can erase all the differences. You can be so respectful with minorities that you make them just as normal as everyone else. You can show minorities who behave the, in exactly the same way as every other person. And of all the possible fa failures, if you have to like, do something wrong with the diversity, do this, right? Because it's way better uh, than actually creating a game without diversity, and it's way better than creating a game where, when you strengthen s stereotypes. Uh, actually, this one just har harms your game. It's way less interesting than it could have been if you did acknowledge the differences, but in a proper way. Yeah, yeah so basically what you do, you take a you erase things to make people seem normal. You adhere to some kind of a preconceived norm because uh, for the sake of being normal. And that's it. And that's a very easy way to, to think about being respectful. But then again, uh, it completely reduces the individual element of people and the, in the individual differences. So uh, it also harms the, the, the story itself because, it's, again, it's very dull. Yeah, well, it won't allow you to show the groups that you're representing um, fully but it will accustom your player to seeing them. Yeah, so you at least get the presence element. Hmm. So when yeah, you can actually yeah. do that. You can actually focus on diversity too much. Well, it, it is enough that you get a diverse cast and you think, hmm, I need to figure out an interesting plot. So I have this woman with a certain background. She's from in northern villages with, um, again, some, sort, some form of witchcraft. And it seemed so interesting for us that we came up with this elaborate story uh, that we really wanted to tell. Uh, but then we figured out, wow, we've made a character that actually fits the stereotype really, really well, right? Just yeah, yeah, because she's supposed to be, like, she's, she's a stereotype of a native. Uh, she's, a ma she's magical, she's mysterious, she possesses strange powers, and she has folk knowledge on the place of, of the places that are yeah, foreign, I guess, to the, main, to the main culture, to the mainstream culture of the world that is being presented. So she, basic, she, is, she is the native. If there's a colonial, then there's the native. So um, we focused on her very much because we really liked her, uh, and not only did we reproduce so many, many stereotypes with her, but um, we also basically put too much work into things that were completely unnecessary, I think, in the end. Because we created, I mean, yeah. I remember that we wrote so many, so many backstories just to uh, give them, again, give the characters more complexity and more depth and more past. And in the end, it's not really... I mean, you have to really balance the amount of work that you put into your characters with what is actually needed for the plot. This is the key. What is really needed for the plot? If the character is black because that it, that it means something in this world, it means something for the story, then that's a plot device already, the race. 
if the backstory is really going to be told, if, it's really, if it really deepens the experience. Again, that's a plot device, potentially. Um, if it's not, think twice whether you should really do it. Yeah, so and basically, mm, well, don't, f don't uh, produce too much, but at the beginning when you cr create a character, you probably come up with a couple of adjectives to you know, know what he, he or she would act like in different various situations. So if you have a diverse cast, probably one of those adjectives to you know, remind you of what the character is and what background he or she has might be a black person, might be gay. And then, if, then it, because we like people to be congruent, then they're believable. Uh, we tend to, you know, write just about one aspect. It all it starts all coming down to this diverse part. So remember to add something, maybe a little incongruent in there, just to remind the player that the character you've created is a real person with something weird in them. Yes, you can. Paradoxically enough, you can reduce somebody to the minority. You can reduce somebody to diversity. Diversity can actually be reductive. All right, uh, so... Safe spaces. Yeah, yeah safe spaces. Part. This is what uh, people usually want. Uh, From life in general, right? When you care about diversity, you would like a safe space where uh, it would be okay to be diverse, when it where it wouldn't be transparent, but it would be safe, it would be fine, and so on. Uh, so, it might actually be a very bad idea to recreate that in a game. Possibly, because in order to be interesting, in order to, for your player to strive for something in the story, you need to have conflict, right? This is the, the obvious thing. So you have a safe space, you don't have conflict in it. At least the conflict whatever it is, whether it exists or not, the conflict cannot be based on that which the safe space excludes. If safe sp space excludes racism, you cannot have a race-based conflict. That is obviously true. But then you should have something else to push the story forward. You have, you have to have some kind of an antagonist uh, or antagonistic situation, something to strive for, something that the characters are struggling with. So our, our idea would be uh, was to create safe space, uh, to give the player both, right? Give them conflict and give them spa safe space. Just what we did is we shrunk the safe space to, our, to like one relationship. So our character would have a spa safe space in, within this relationship, but, but when interacting with everyone else, there, there would be conflict, right? So you can do this with one relationship or with one space or just timing of the game. Yeah, you can base your conflicts on anything and you can give a safe space for all the usual uh, suspects when it comes to social is issues like uh, gender, sexual orientation, or race, ethnicity, social class, uh, and background. But you, can still, you still need conflict, you can make it about something else. Okay. That's the point, don't be preachy about it. If you have to tell the player that this is wrong, you've done something... It is wrong. Basically, if you want, if you want people, you can't tell people not to do bad things. They will not get it. You have to show it somehow. You have to make them experience something that will probably change them, change their minds. Perhaps not. But then again, you have to keep trying. If you just tell them, please be good to each other. Please be kind. Or what? What you've done was unkind, right? You've you've done your storytelling. Yes. Story if you telling, if you oh. give them minus ten points in social relationship for being a racist asshole, this is not the proper way of teaching them how to be respectful of people of color. Really not. They will just care for ten points, and this is not what, well, social interactions should be about. I guess. Yeah. Uh, so our solution was to make games to make a game with choices where each choice would be both good and bad simultaneously. You would always have good and bad consequences. And each choice was gray, morally gray. So basically, that's, that's what we would want from games. So what can you do with stereotypes? If you have so many and you're going to bump on them sooner or later, don't fight them, use them. 
It's tricky, but you can still do it. You can either invert them. <clears throat> this is the, the most obvious way to do it, right? So you, can, you make a strong woman instead of a damsel in distress. Of course, the strong woman is already a stereotype in its own, in its own right, since it's been invented quite a while ago. Uh, that's why inversion is so very superficial and doesn't really uh, change uh, that much of a perspective. It just falls into a different stereotype. Even if it's not yet a stereotype, it will soon be, probably, if people start to reproduce it enough. Uh, you can always repurpose stereotypes, right? Uh, this is actually connected to creating complex characters. So you can get this, this stereotype but, uh, and make the character stereotypical, but if you the character is complex enough and understandable enough, uh, your st stereotype sort, sort of dissolves in the character and stops becoming so emotionally loaded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, complexity. Be complex about your characters. Treat them as people. Yeah, tips and yeah. Uh, feedback we got. Can you see the feedback? No, you can. So, uh, half-naked black witch doctors and Arabic dancers. Well done pairing your sexism with the, right, with the right amount of racism. I'm very disappointed. Shame on us. Yeah. Not as ridiculous uh, a notion as you think, considering how often people seem to make black characters racist, racist tropes and stereotypes and fetishize Arabic women and culture. Rather than acting indignant about it, just make sure your characters are above the same old ignorant representations. This is the kind of feedback we got. Uh, it was on, uh, on YouTube on the, on the teaser, right? Was it the teaser? Which, uh, which was very short, and obviously in the teaser you get visual information. You don't really get that much information about the story. So you can't really make... Not, you just don't know what the characters are about. You can only see them. So if you do, you, if you do see an Arabic sensual belly dancer, you just assume that, oh, they went for it. That's easy, that's sellable, that's very, very stereotypical and uh, terribly offensive, but they did it. Then if you see the same with the voodoo witch, the same with the, I don't know, whatever, the Asian technical woman, the black gay guy, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, So basically, don't wait too long in the game to reveal that at least a couple of your characters are not as stereotypical as they seem, right? Because that's among other problems with our feedback that we have actually listened to and fixed. This one with the trailer, where it's ha hard to do anything about it. Just re like let your pr player know that there's more to expect so that they wouldn't shut out your game. Yeah, because again, that's, uh, that's actually something you can work with. If your characters look stereotypical, but then as they, their stories unfold, you learn that they actually go against the grain because you are repurposing the stereotypes. Well, that's actually uh, a good thing to do. It's interesting. It may be surprising. It may push. It may even push the story forward, and it can do something with the players emotionally because they're going to not. Perhaps they will not expect it, but then there are still things that you can uh, change because people ask you to change them. So we did some of that, and uh, feedback I think is the most important part of this this learning process. This re uh, this moving, I guess, parallelly to what people want to see in your games, to what they really want to experience in your games, you should cooperate, really. This is a two-way thing. Yeah. Apart from the feedback that, that was, I don't want to play a gay, gay character, but basically you will know which feedback to follow, right? Yeah. Okay. Do it. It's fun. It takes lots of work. It gives uh, you a complex wor world and more interesting characters, if you pull it off. You'll be very tired, you'll be very frustrated, you will drink a lot, or whatever your drug is. And you will get loads of negative feed feedback. People will hate you for it in the end. Some people will still hate you for it in the end. But others will send you fantastic emails saying, this character tells the story of my life. And this story is the story of my family. And if you get emails like that, well, it really is worth it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this was longer than I expected. Uh, do we still have some It was. Time? I mean, Jeez. do you have any questions? Okay, go yeah. ahead. Go for it. Uh, 
Okay, so how do we find playtesters? Uh, we actually were very lucky with that, I think. They found us, Yeah. basically. Uh, we got a small fandom of people uh, wishing to play the, who, who loved Cinders, the first game, and they just were so curious about Solstice, the other one, that they just offered, you know, oh, oh yeah, we're going to play it, of course we want to play it. And after that, we always got loads of feedback and, uh, and feedback helps, as, 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 you, as you saw. Yeah, so. it also, I didn't expect that, but apparently it's very weird to have such a diverse cast as we had on our second game. And when people th heard about it, they were eager to play. So we got a couple of responses because of that. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Go ahead. Well, yeah, <laughs> I agree. Okay. Personally, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. the question is, what, what, what to do with stereotypes if you can't really avoid them, right? So, um, you do need content in your in your characters, obviously, and you need to make them interesting. So, if you really get stereotypes in the end, put something else there as well. Put something to make a real difference. Yeah. Make them really complex. I'm. Seriously, like, let's look around at, at ourselves. Each and every one of us probably would fall into some stereotypes. Yeah, like, like stereotypes. a short exercise. Everybody looks to the person to, to the, the right. right. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, those, yeah, <laughs> no. those sitting on the right look to your left, whatever. To the next row, right? And if you don't know that person, what do you think about that person? Like the first 10 seconds, you already get automatic associations. The hairdo, the face. I don't know, the way they dressed, the way, the way if dressed. they smiled or laughed or they said, you we know, all of that is already is giving you info. Yeah, we, we are also using that, right? When you dress in the morning, you know that you have to dress a certain way so that people will respond to you a certain way. You probably trim your beard, like, perfectly so that people would respond, blah, blah, blah. Or uh, not. Or not, right? S to be scruffy looking and get a proper response. So it is a part of our world, I and it's like, yeah, sure, you'll create stereotypes. Let's not be afraid of it, just show a bit more. Just make them fun and not really offensive, that's already enough. And real, right? Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> How can I, I do agree with you. It yes, is a problem. It's all, it's and, all very true. And we were, <laughs> we're very lucky, probably, uh, with this game and diversity, because this is a visual novel, so we had loads of time to develop our characters. And, like, when you do a shooter, you are going to see the face for, like, 
three seconds before you blow their head away, right? Not much space for story. story Although doing. still, there, there is a story there somewhere, probably, right? Yeah. Why, do, why are you doing the mission in the first place? What country is it? Why does he look this way and is dressed this way and why, why is he charging at you and so on? And what does it mean that the terrorists won, you so know? Does, does it really mean something? Like it probably does. It prob you probably could sneak some story in the details or in the, in the graphics, but yeah, it's not... So yeah, because you yeah. can't do, always do everything. True, uh, right. but the bottom line is that even if you don't have place for ten extremely well developed complex characters, everything is a message. Even even if you don't really pay that much attention to it, the visuals itself, that's already a message. And apart from that, prejudice is a mindset. So if you manage to have one character that breaks the stereotypes and teaches your your player something new and to be more open-minded, you probably have done a step in the right di direction even if you do some missteps in the background because you don't have space for it. That's the definition of tokenism. It is. It's creating a token. It's a token character because then the them belonging to a minoritarian group, for example, or being a person of color, have up has absolutely no influence on the story. It has abs it is not a plot device. And it's not. It has no influence on the character's background. So basically, you could do that. You would probably er erase all the differences between. Well, you you'd probably have a at least a couple of accidental stereotypes, but uh, yeah, afterwards manually. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, you wouldn't take into account that the pers a person of this background would have probably different feelings about at least a couple of things, not everything, but you know. Yeah, but it's awfully complicated, of course, because some people would expect you to be respectful to other races, other than your own, I mean. And by that, they would probably mean something like, make them not different than you are, because that's the norm, right? So if they're the same, you're being respectful. At the same time, on the other hand, this is completely, this is a, the true meaning of lack of respect, because they have their own cultural backgrounds that you've just erased. They have their own personal stories. They have their own personal experiences that are different from your own because of the race. Basically, the finish of diversity, they're different than you are, right? And the next character is different than the previous one. It means there's content, and you have exactly. to take care of that content, for at least in some part. Other, otherwise, you're really like explaining it away by saying, oh, we're all the same. We are really not. Well, yeah, well, you, I guess you could do that. I, I wouldn't say it's disrespectful so much. It's probably better than actually creating stereotypes yeah, and true, using true, the, true. them purposefully, but you're missing your chance for something more, I'd say. Okay. Um. Yeah, so the question is if visuals can uh, be represented in different ways by different by people from different different cultural backgrounds. Re represented or interpreted? Interpreted, yeah. Interpreted. Yeah. Right? Mm. I don't... I, uh, we haven't... We don't, we don't really have experience with that. I, I don't think we do. But, um, but obviously it's possible, and it, it happens, I'm sure. Uh, just just by the sake of being accustomed to a certain cultural circle, a certain... Uh, you have some knowledge, for example, right? You have some knowledge about architecture, let's say. So if you create a city in a certain architectural style, to you it may be obvious that this is more or less Europe, or this is yeah. Middle East, or this is Japan, right? Or this is Asia in general, whatever. But to some other person, perhaps, who is from that place, it means something else. It means a concrete city. Uh, a very specific place, or it means that it's a temple, but you had no idea, or your graphic artist had no idea that it's actually a temple, and your artist made a city of temples, 
because uh, they, they thought it's, it's just an ordinary Asian building, for example. So yeah, they obviously. They all look like that, right? And they all, they uh, all look like that so, in Asia. Yeah, but basically, uh, we didn't have that much of a, well, we didn't encounter a huge problem with this because our uh, testers were from the markets where, where our game sells. Right, so they would probably let us know, or maybe they have, and we just, you know, corrected that somewhere in the process. Yeah. You, had, or is it? Okay. Use them, but use them, you know, cleverly. I mean. Yeah, complexity, Precisely. complexity, yeah. you know, mix, uh, mix uh, things around. Yeah, make them it's interesting. a tricky balance, right, of how much of a stereotype you want to use. Go ahead. Is it a useful way of using stereotypes just to say these things and Actually, that is a very good solution because then you would probably almost explicitly speak about the stereotype in game and let the player experience that. We didn't actually do that because we wanted to create a world where, without those stereotypes. So, you know, in a, we wanted to create a wor world that w we would, in many ways, like to live in, to let the player experience it, a, a word, world of diversity, so no stereotypes inside. But yeah, very good way of, you know, dealing with that, yeah. I suppose. Okay. Anyone else? Well then, thank you very much. Thanks a lot.